Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving Cauchy's functional equation for differentiable functions. So we have f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y, and we are given that f is differentiable. So we're going to find the functions that satisfy this equation, and I'll be presenting two methods, even though the methods are very similar, and they both use differentiability. All right, let's start with the first method. So our first method uh, basically uh, depends on differentiating both sides, first with respect to x, and then we're going to differentiate with respect to y. All right, so differentiating with respect to x basically means that we treat y as a constant. So we can say, hey, differentiate, and I'm going to use wrt for with respect to, I hope you don't mind, with respect to x. So when I differentiate the left-hand side, I'm getting f prime x plus y. From the chain rule, uh, the derivative of the inside is just 1 because the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of y is 0. So I don't really have to worry about it. And the right-hand side becomes, since f of x is a function of x, it becomes f prime of x. But f of y is a constant because y is a constant in this case. Great, so we get this e equation from here. Let's go ahead and differentiate with respect to y. And since we have like a really nice symmetry here, we're going to get something similar. So it's going to be f prime x plus y on the left hand side. It's not going to change. And the right hand side is just going to be, since we're differentiating with respect to y, x is a constant, we're going to get f prime of y. Now notice that we got two equations and the left hand sides of these equations are equal. So that kind of gives us uh, a really good fact that the right hand sides are also equal. So from here we can safely say that, and let me make this pen a little thicker probably, we get f prime of x equals f prime of y. And this is really cool because x and y can be different variables. Uh, they can be the same, but they don't have to be, so they're kind of free variables. So this is re really cool. So this basically tells us that no matter which variable you use, the derivative of f is just going to be the same. But how is that possible that two variable expressions are always, always equal? Well, it can only happen if they're both... Uh, okay, let me, before I say the answer, let me just go, go ahead and give you some examples. For example, if you replace x with 1, you get f prime of 1. If you repla replace y with 2, you get f prime of 2. And, you know, you can get f prime of 5 halves, so on and so forth. So all the derivatives at any point is equal. It can only happen if uh, the derivative equals a constant. And I guess for this one, we could use a c. It doesn't really matter. You can use m, you can use a. So the derivative of this function at any point is constant. So this gives us the following. f prime of x is equal to a constant. Now, what kind of functions uh, give us a constant when differentiated? Well, we can integrate both sides to find f of x. From here, if you integrate f prime of x dx, and that is going to be c dx. c is a constant. Therefore, uh, the integral on the left-hand side, not therefore, but the integral on the left-hand side is just going to be f of x. And the right-hand side, let's save the constant for the right-hand side. The If you integrate c, you get cx. Because think about a function whose derivative is c, and that will be c of x, or cx, sorry. Uh, plus, uh, we need another constant, but that doesn't have to be the same one, so let's go ahead and use d for that. So, this expression is really cool because it kind of gives us an idea about what f of x looks like. So, f of x is a linear function. Again, uh, if f is differentiable and we are given this equation, we can basically find out that f must be a linear function. But that's not the end of the story because we still have to find, if possible, these constants. So... How do we do that? There is two ways to go about it. So it's really cool. I'm going to present uh, kind of two uh, methods here, but uh, kind of 1a and 1b maybe. So the first one is going to be, we have f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. So we can basically uh, plug this in to find, uh, to get more information about c and d. We don't know what we're going to find. So f of x plus y is just going to be c times x plus y plus d. 
And the right-hand side is going to be CX plus D plus CY plus D. So if you go ahead and distribute, you get CX plus CY plus D. And that equals CX plus CY plus 2D. Oh, I should have used a B there so I can say 2B or not 2B. But anyways, so from here, uh, we can kind of cross out some stuff like CX, CY, cancel out. And we end up with something real cool. 2D equals D. And this means that D must be 0. Great. All right. So if D is equal to 0, we don't get any information about C. And that's OK. Let's go back to f of x equals Cx plus D. And since f of x is Cx plus D and D is equal to 0, then we can express f of x as Cx. So f is not just a linear function, but it's a linear function that kind of goes through, not kind of, but goes through the origin. So its y-intercept is 0. Great. So now in order to find out whether this function is going to satisfy the equation, you can go ahead and plug it in. But we plugged it in to find the value of d. So you can guess it's going to work. But you can always check that. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Maybe at the end of the second method, we can just go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. OK. So my second method also uses differentiability of f because it's a given. So let me rewrite my equation, f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. Great. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to evaluate uh, something called a difference quotient. If you ever studied pre-calculus or even calculus, uh, you should definitely know about this. So we're going to write the difference quotient, which is uh, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, find out what f of x plus h is going to be. And then I'm going to set up my difference quotient. All right. So what is f of x plus h? Well, by the definition, it's going to equal f of x plus f of h. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and subtract f of h from both sides. And we get f of x plus h minus Actually, not f of h. We're going to subtract f of x from both sides the other way around. And this is going to give us f of h. Awesome. So now, here's what I would like to do. So this the, we're kind of forming the difference quotient here, right? So let's go ahead and divide both sides by h, provided that h does not equal 0. All right. And then we get the following equation. Now, this is not good enough because uh, I, I want to turn this into a differential, um, what is it called, the derivative. So let's go ahead and take the limit on both sides. So we're going to take the limit. Since these two uh, sides are equal, then their limits are also going to be equal. As h approaches 0, I'm going to take the limits, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. The left-hand side should be familiar to you if you have studied uh, derivatives at all. Anyways, so the left-hand side is the derivative of the function f of x. So by definition, it's f prime. It's real cool. So you can kind of use this uh, limit definition to prove uh, the derivative of x squared, x cubed, x, so on and so forth. Well, sine and cosine are a little different. It's they're trickier, but you can still do it. The right hand side, on the other hand, though, it's not uh, completely simplified. So let's go ahead and not simplify it, but maybe not set up yet. I'm going to write this as, uh, let's see, I can write this as f of 0, f of h, I should probably say f of h. And I want to write it as, um, OK, I want to write it as f of h. But instead of f of h, I'm going to use f of 0 plus h. I hope you don't mind. Minus, OK, so here's one thing I'm going to use. Uh, we know that f of 0 is equal to 0. How do we know that? Well, let's suppose you didn't know that, right? So let me go ahead and pause here. So I'm going to use f of, OK, here we go. I'm kind of confusing myself here. So I'm going to put a 0 here. Let's put a 0. Uh-oh. Uh, and that's divided by h. So that's my limit. But save that for now. Uh, we're going to uh, give it more meaning. So let's go ahead and evaluate the following. We know that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. And now if you replace x and y uh, both with 0, you get f of 0 equals f of 0 plus f of 0, which is 2f of 0. And you can kind of cancel out one of the f of zeros. And from here, you get f of 0 is equal to 0. So that's the tricky part, that I'm going to replace the 0 here 
with f of 0. And here's what we get from here. We get f prime is of x is equal to limit as h approaches 0 of f of 0 plus h minus. Now, I'm going to replace 0 with f of 0 because that's what it equals divided by h. Now, notice that I said for the left-hand side that this is the definition of the derivative of f at x. But now what is going on here, we're replacing x with 0 because that's what it is. Therefore, the right-hand side, right side should equal f prime at 0. But guess what? This is really interesting because we're finding a really interesting equation again. The derivative of f at any point is equal to the derivative at 0, which we could call a constant. So how about this? Let's call this a. And then from here, we get f prime of x equals a. If you integrate like before, you get ax plus b. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. We can just go ahead and plug this into our equation. And we're going to get from here b equals 0 because it's going to be ax plus ay plus b equals ax plus ay plus 2b. Finally, I can do that, make that joke. And we get 2b or not 2b. 2b equals b. Don't cross out the b's and write 2 equals 1. Yay, I proved it. That's not true. Uh, this means that 2b minus b is equal to 0, which means b is equal to 0. Therefore, f of x is just going to be, because we called it ax plus b, it is just going to be f of x is going to be ax. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.